السلام عليكم سيدتي سادتي شكرا جزيلا على حضوركم هنا معنا اليوم أنا خالد وفسبرغ الناطق الرسمي باسم السفارة الأمريكية في الجزائر يحضر معنا اليوم ضيف خاص وهو السيد ديفيد شنكر الذي يشغل منصب مساعد وزير الخارجية للشؤون الشرق الأدنى وهو يشغل هذا المنصب منذ جوان 2019 قبل انضمامه إلى وزارة الخارجية شغل السيد شنكر منصب مدير برنامج السياسة العربية في معهد واشنطن للشرق الأدنى ودرس السيد شنكر في الجامعة الأمريكية في القاهرة لذا هو يفهم بل يجيد اللغة العربية دعونا الآن نعطي السيد شنكر بعض الوقت لإلقاء كلمته القصيرة قبل أن نفتح المجال للأسئلة نظرا لضيق الوقت فإنه خلال فترة الأسئلة سنسمح لكل صحفية طرح سؤال واحد فقط على مساعد وزير الخارجية السيد شنكر تفضل السلام عليكم good afternoon it's good to be here in this city's history culture and, and dynamism uh, the same can be said for for all of Algeria the United States has long had important political and economic ties with Algeria, and I'm here to underline and reaffirm them. Let me start by sending my best wishes to President Daboon after his return to Algeria. I hope he has a speedy and full recovery. Algerians, Americans, and the rest of the world are in the midst of a terrible struggle against the coronavirus, and on behalf of the United States, I send my deepest condolences to those Algerians who have lost friends, and family to this terrible disease, Allah Yarham. The United States has committed $4.1 million to support Algeria's fight against COVID-19 and will continue our important partnerships in the months and years ahead. I'm proud about our partnership in countering the virus and note it is based on a long history of U.S.-Algeria cooperation. In this residence behind me, Algerian diplomats helped us release 52 American diplomats after 444 days of being held hostage by Iran some 40 years ago this month. In 2000, we worked with Algeria to broker an end to the Ethiopian-Eritrean war, which had claimed tens of thousands of lives. In 2015, American diplomats supported Algeria's leadership in concluding the Algiers Accords, which sought to curb the violence in Mali. Algeria is a leader on the international stage, and both of our countries have a shared interest in ensuring a safer, more stable, and more prosperous region. And our partnership is much deeper than politics and security cooperation. If the circumstances permit, given the global pandemic, the United States will be privileged to, to be uh, the country of honor at this year's Algeria, Algiers International Fair, where American firms will once again explore win-win partnerships with their Algerian counterparts. Indeed, many American companies are in Algeria, creating jobs and economic growth from the pharmaceutical sector to energy production and everywhere in between. Each and every day, we're building people-to-people -people ties in education, the arts, culture, and so many other areas. In some, we have a great deal in common and a deep and abiding respect for the Algerian government and the Algerian people. We look forward to continuing our valuable partnership in the years ahead. And with that, I look forward to taking your questions. وهل يتضمن الاعتراف الامريكي والاتفاق الثلاثي مؤخرا بين واشنطن واسرائيل والمغرب حضور عسكري امريكي في الصحراء الغربيه سواء بشكل مباشر او غير مباشر؟ Uh, thank you. Uh, as for the first question, whether a Biden administration would retract or reverse President Trump's decision regarding the recognition of Moroccan sovereignty over the Western Sahara, uh, this is not 
uh, a decision that I can speak to. Uh, I was appointed uh, to work in this administration uh, for Secretary Pompeo. Um, every president has the prerogative uh, to make decisions and to set foreign policy and to determine uh, the administration's initiatives. Uh, what I can tell you uh, is that the United States continues to believe that political negotiations are capable of, that pl only political negotiations are capable of resolving the issues between Morocco and the Polisario. And we believe that negotiations should occur within the context of Morocco's autonomy plan. Um, on the issue of whether the U.S. will have uh, boots on the ground in Western Sahara, um, uh, let me be clear, uh, the U.S. is not establishing a military base in the Western Sahara. It's not talking about, uh, AFRICOM is not talking about moving its headquarters to the Western Sahara. Um, uh, so in that regard, uh, I've seen the articles in, in the Moroccan and, and Algerian press, and um, the, the, they are incorrect. Hello, welcome from Nahar TV. First of all, I would like to uh, welcome you to Algeria. My question is, can you tell us about ways and means of military cooperation in uh, both economic and security files between uh, our two countries, America and uh, Algeria? Well, thank you. Um, uh, you know, I, I am here um, following up on visits of then former Secretary uh, Mark Esper, former Secretary of Defense in October, um, the AFRICOM commander, uh, General Townsend, who was here in September, and of course, um, uh, my, my, ca my counterpart, my colleague, uh, Secretary of uh, the Air Force, Bennett, um, who was here for a day-long visit and, and leaving today. Um, we're all here for the same reason, and that is because the United States is committed to its relationship with Algeria. Uh, it's rich, it's multifaceted, uh, and includes a security dimension, obviously, but also uh, an economic dimension, and we're looking to, to, to grow both of those. Um, both of those elements. Um, I'll leave the, the defense side um, to uh, uh, the Secretary of, of the Air Force who, uh, who is here uh, today. Um, she engaged in productive conversations with, with her counterparts, talking about ways that we can cooperate in terms of um, uh, perhaps military sales, perhaps um, uh, additional training, uh, IMET, all sorts of um, things that we work together. And of course, um, the most sort of well-known aspect of, of this productive military relationship has been um, uh, just excellent um, counterterrorism cooperation, um, something that uh, both the United States and, and um, the government here in Algeria are, are dedicated, uh, totally committed to. Um, I met also uh, today with um, uh, the Minister of Finance with, um, and with Foreign Minister uh, Bukadum. Um, we're, uh, with the Minister of Finance, we talked about um, areas of um, increasing trade, um, areas of, of technical assistance, ways of uh, increasing um, U.S. foreign direct investment um, in um, Algeria, um, where um, uh, just uh, incredible developments are taking place in terms of uh, legislative, um, productive legislative reform and uh, new legislation um, that is um, uh, making Algeria an even more attractive place uh, to investors and, uh, and a place that, of, of course, we we look forward to doing more work here. It's in, uh, in both of our, our interests. Uh, <clears throat> well, thank you. Those are um, two interesting questions. I, you know, uh, as I said a, a, a minute ago, um, you know, every administration has its own prerogatives, um, and so um, you have democratic administrations, you have Republican administrations. They differ, um, but they also, it, remarkably, um, uh, are pretty consistent across the years and in, in, in many of their, their policies and their approach, approaches to the region in particular, um, like countries like Algeria, with, with which 
we have deep, enduring, and historic relationship. You, you remember, um, it was uh, you know Senator John F. Kennedy uh, who gave his speech in, on the Senate floor in 1956, calling for Algerian independence. Since then, we've had Republican administration, Democratic administration, and we have built on um, a, a strategic um, cooperation and partnership economically um, that has been, I think, very productive for, for both sides. And I would anticipate uh, that the Biden administration would continue along these lines. I don't have any specifics for you. I can't, I can't really comment on that. Um, as for um, Algeria's role, and so I'm not going to address um, how this will change under a Biden administration. I can say that we the United States and, and Algeria have um, a, a plethora of a shared interests in Libya. Uh, that is, uh, we, we both believe that, um, that there has to be a political solution to the problem. We are both supportive of the UN process, the UN-led process. This is the five plus five military talks. This is the UN-led political dialogue forum. Um, we believe that UN-led uh, facilitated political negotiations are, are the best way to achieve peace in the region. We, we have uh, very good counterterrorism cooperation uh, in Mali. We think that uh, uh, Algeria is playing a, a productive role um, across the board. These are um, areas in which um, there is, a, I think, a, a remarkable uh, consistency. Um, so um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. On the, uh, on the first question, I think um, it was all, uh, I think for all of us, it was um, uh, troubling uh, to watch these developments. Um, um, I'd just like to quote for you um, uh, a bit of what um, Secretary of State uh, Pompeo uh, tweeted yesterday. Um, and I quote, uh, the storming of the U.S. Capitol was unacceptable. America is better than what we saw today. Um, I, so I think that sums up uh, his thoughts and, and certainly uh, my thoughts. Um, as for um, what um, certain uh, former uh, politicians or, um, or Republican or Democrats said about um, the Western um, Sahara, um, I'd like to um, just say, um, you know, uh, reiterate, I think, what I said uh, before, um, which is that, um, you know, the Western um, Sahara, that the United States <clears throat> has always and continues to believe that only political negotiations are capable of resolving the issues between Morocco and the Polisario and that those negotiations have to, should occur within the context of the autonomy plan. Um, beyond that, I think I'd say that the status quo in the Western Sahara has not worked. It's benefited no one. I think what we've done, what the administration has done, is made a move toward a a more serious, a more realistic, and a more credible solution to the conflict in the Western Sahara. So that finding that solution, I think, requires uh, bold, creative, and, and unorthodox uh, approaches to the problem. And um, that is um, what, the, what the administration did. And we continue to urge all participants to constructively engage and with the UN. We support the uh, appointment of another um, UN special envoy. Um, and we consider, uh, as we all consider and back the UN in moving toward um, the new and creative 
and uh, ways to, to find, uh, find uh, progress on the peace process. So I'll leave it there. في الوقت الذي تسعى فيه بعض الدول الى الانفراد بالمنطقه بوضع مخططاتها في العلميه في المنطقه. بالنسبه للسؤال الثاني حول الشراكه الامريكيه الجزائريه في المجال الاقتصادي وما مركز الجزائر من مشروع فوستال افريكا. Well, thank you. I wish I could um, offer you uh, words of wisdom on the, the Sahel. Um, my counterpart, my colleague over at the State Department, Tibor Naj, who's the Assistant Secretary for Africa, um, is mostly responsible for that. Um, I can refer you um, back to him. Um, I do know that, um, that Algeria uh, is, and this pertains to the second question um, as much as the first, um, as a member of the um, uh, African Union, um, an important member and leader um, in Africa uh, plays a, a critical role in the security in the region and is a respected voice. Um, it is also, uh, by nature of its population, um, educated population, um, young population, uh, size, uh, location, um, an entrepot to Africa. Um, and as increasingly Algeria, as I mentioned earlier, is changing in a productive way, its legislation making it a more um, a attractive place for investment, um, can serve a, a real positive role in terms of trade and entree uh, to both Africa um, and to Europe. Um, so uh, it's an important, um, important element in how the United States um, looks at trade and development um, in, the, in the region. شكرا جزيلا على حضوركم معنا اليوم